Welcome back. We are talking about logistic regression. And in this video, we're gonna deal with the issue of confounding variables. Okay, not that complicated, reasonably easy to understand, but important to get your head around. So stick with me. Uh, this is part of a series on logistic regression. You can go back and watch the entire series if you want. If you kind of already understand logistic regression and you need to understand confounding, stick around with me, we'll deal with this. If you know nothing about logistic regression, go back and start at the beginning of the series. We'll catch you up real quick um, and you'll be a, a logistic regression superhero before you know it. Just so that you know if it's your first time here, everything on this page is available to you. I'll put a link uh, on, on the screen as a little card at the end of the video. You can get this whole page and if you do, you can click on any of the show code and if you're working in R, boom shakalaka, here's all the R code with little annotations that give explanations about the code. So you can, and by the way, all of the data that I use in this video is available if you download and install, well, you just need to install packages, ML Bench, and this is the data that we use. So, you know, happy days. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Here is the first 10 lines of the data set. And as you can see, there's a binary outcome, diabetes, not diabetes. And we're interested in, in this particular video, we're interested in glucose and age, right? Glucose and age and their respective and combined effect on predicting diabetes. Now in the previous video, and I won't go through the whole thing again, uh, by the way, here, look at this. This is the probability. Uh, oh, hang on. Anyway, don't worry about that. Let's let's keep going. I don't want to waste your time. Okay. Uh, we created a model. In the first instance, we got a model here of glucose. Now, the reason I'm looking at glucose by itself first will become apparent in just a few seconds. Glucose has a positive relationship because the estimate here is positive and it's statistically significant. Because it's positive, we know that as glucose goes up, uh, the likelihood of diabetes goes up. And look at the number. It's 0 0.37. Now let's go down and look at the model that we created where we put glucose and age. Here we've got glucose plus age in the model. Huh, we've got an estimate for glucose, still positive, but less so. Hmm, interesting. When we've added age into the model, something's happened to the extent to which we see a relationship between glucose and diabetes. In other words, and this is what we call the adjusted results, the glucose has been adjusted for the fact that now age is in the model, but why is that? Why is, why is the relationship between glucose and diabetes not as strong now that we've got age in the model? And of course we've got age, age has got a positive relationship uh, with diabetes and both of these are statistically significant. Boom shakalaka. We looked at the residual deviance and the AIC, they both went down when we added age, so we know it's a good model. That's not for this video. Watch the previous ones if you're interested. Now, what we need to understand is this idea about confounding. Let's get into it. Let me give you a little analogy that'll help you understand uh, this relationship. Actually, before we do that, there's one more thing I wanna point out, right? We've established that both glucose and age are associated with increased risk of diabetes. Interestingly, if we just go down a little bit here, boom, 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 confounding, ah, here is a plot of glucose against age. And we can see that as you get older, your glucose levels go up. Huh, that's interesting. So this plot has got nothing to do with diabetes. This is just saying older people have got higher glucose. Right, we also know that older people are also more likely to have diabetes. So some of the effect, some of what we're seeing when we see the relationship between glucose and diabetes might be a function of the fact that you are looking at a cohort of people in general that are older. Okay, let me give you a little analogy that might explain that better, just to understand the idea of confounding. If I said to you that uh, there's a positive correlation between eating ice cream and being attacked by a shark, and, and I could plot it, I could show you the numbers, I could show you that there's a statistically significant correlation coefficient between ice cream consumption and shark attack rates. And so there must, and I, and I argued that there's a causal relationship, you'd say, no, that, that's crazy talk, eating ice cream has got nothing to do with being attacked by a shark, and you would be right. What's actually happening here is that on hot days, people eat more ice cream, and on hot days, people tend to swim in the sea and are at risk of getting a shark attack. And so there's a third variable, and that third variable is temperature. Temperature is associated both with the exposure of interest, in this case, eating ice cream, and temperature is associated with shark attacks, 
hotter weather, people swim more, get attacked by sharks. And so that's what we call a confounding variable. It's an alternative explanation. Uh, it's associated with both the exposure and the outcome. And that's the case with glucose and age. Glucose is associated with being older, as uh, being older is associated with a higher level of glucose. Being older is also associated with a higher risk of diabetes. In this case, being older does not explain away all of the association of glucose and diabetes, just some of it. Okay, and so that's why the relationship between glucose and diabetes went down. It didn't go down to zero because glucose uh, age doesn't explain all of the relationship between glucose and diabetes. It explains some of it. And so we've adjusted the results. The results have been adjusted by our model. And let me tell you what, this is one of the most powerful things about regression modeling in linear regression and logistic re regression is that you can add variables in that are confounders and they get controlled for. So we're really seeing what is the effect of just glucose, assuming that age has no effect on this. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, that's confounding. The next video we're going to talk about effect modifiers, which are similar but slightly different. People get them confused. I'll explain it in a way that makes it perfectly simple. So we'll deal with that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, there'll be a link on the screen at the moment that you can click on, and that'll give you access to this page, the code, the annotations, etc., etc. Thanks for watching. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Take care. Om shakalaka.